We've been working with our favorite linear ordinary differential equation, dx dt equals lambda times x. This is absolutely essential, absolutely foundational. We know how to solve it. The solution is what? x naught e to the lambda t. But how do we get that? How do we get that without just guessing and checking and doing so in a completely ad hoc manner? How do we do so in a principled manner? The principled way, the right way to solve this differential equation is through integration. This is called integrating the ODE. Let's see how this works in this case. We start off with our differential equation, dx dt equals lambda times x. The first step, the most important step, is going to seem a little unmotivated. We're going to separate out the variables, get all the x terms on one side, all the t terms on the other side. So dividing by x, multiplying by dt gives us dx over x on the left, and on the right, lambda times dt. Now these differential expressions are things that can be integrated. The next step, the important step, is you integrate both sides. So we have the integral of dx over x equals the integral of lambda dt. And since we're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation, it is still a true equation. So let's integrate. What's the integral of dx over x? That antiderivative, log of x. What is the integral of lambda dt? Remember, lambda is a constant. We're integrating with respect to t. That antiderivative is lambda times t. Wait a minute. Did I forget something? Oh, I forgot. I forgot the constant. I forgot the constant. Again, forgetting the constant. I've got a plus c. But do I need a constant on both sides? I, I'm doing two integrations. Why is it OK to just have one constant? Since these are arbitrary constants, if I were to put them on both sides of the equation, I could just move them all to one side. So what we're going to do in this case, and in future cases, is just say plus c over on the right. That's going to work for us. Now, after integrating, we're almost done. We just need to solve for x. How do we do that? On the left, we have log of x. Let's undo that by exponentiation. On the left, we'll have e to the log of x. We have to do the same thing to the right-hand side, so we have e to the quantity lambda t plus c. That exponential on the right, we can split up using exponent laws into e to the lambda t times e to the c. Now, we're basically done. What do we have? On the left, e undoes that natural logarithm. We have x. On the right, we have e to the lambda t times this thing, e to the c. That e to the c, e to some arbitrary constant, is again just some arbitrary constant. But it's not quite arbitrary. Because, as we know, this constant is really the initial condition. Let's rename that x naught, and then we have our final answer, x naught e to the lambda t. You can verify by plugging in t equals 0 that that e to the c is in fact the initial condition x naught. That's it. That's how we get this solution. That's a really, really important method. We're going to be using it over and over in the future. It's so important. It's probably worth looking at again. Let's do an instant replay. Let's see how we get this. We start off with our differential equation. dx dt equals lambda times x. We separate out the x terms from the t terms, dividing by x, multiplying by dt. This gives us an expression of differentials. You might even call it a differential equation. Oh, that makes sense now. And since differentials are things that can be integrated, we do that. We integrate both sides. On the right, the integral of lambda dt is lambda t plus a constant. On the left, the integral of dx over x is log of x. To solve for x, we exponentiate the entire equation. e to the log of x is x. On the right, we have e to the lambda t 
plus c. We can split that up into e to the lambda t times e to the c. That e to the c is a constant. That constant we're going to call x0 because it's the initial condition. That is it. That is our solution, x0 e to the lambda t. You are definitely going to want to remember this, this approach, which has two key steps. First, separation of the variables to each side of an equation, and then integration of both sides. Add a little bit of algebra to solve for your x as a function of t, and that's it, you're done. The reason you're going to want to remember this, the reason you're going to want to know this, is that it has much broader applicability than just the simple linear differential equation.